I do think the A13 is worthy of celebration because it's the main artery of the East End, one of London's great arterial arms. It's not aesthetically a pretty road, but it's the people on that road. The A13 is one of the few roads you can drive on in England that reminds me of driving in America. You can see the whole sweep of history on this road. I like the old A13 because as you went along, it was something to see. All those people who lived everywhere from all gates of Whitechapel in the Victorian period, they would travel along through Barking, which was then a fishing village, all the way down in their sharabanks to South End, and that still goes on. You see on the A13 a people that have been bombed out. They've been tower blocked up. They've been immigranted in. Redundancies everywhere when the docks closed, and they're now being priced out. It's a very busy road, A13, especially the commercial road side. All the way up to East India Dock Road is very busy. Horses and carts used to run up and down there. There was always horse manure in the road. To this day, that A13 is still a route for all sorts of commerce and trade. You've only got to start at all gate, and you've still got much of the clothing industry that used to be run by Jews, is now run by people from India and Pakistan. Whoever came to England at the time used to come straight to Whitechapel, Allgate, because there's a lot of work around here. Basically, we started off serving all the people who were working up in the factories. They couldn't eat things like fish and chips or anything. They needed their own homemade food. We serve them with a few curries, not many, like a lamb curry, a chicken curry, and chapatis, really. The East End's always been famous for gangsters. Well, you know the craze were from, from this area anyway. Across the road, they had, there was the Amsterdam Club. I think that's where they started from, really. That's what, one of the first clubs they took over. Never had any problems with anyone. Everyone was okay with us. We served them good food, they went, <laughs> went back happy. So I don't think they gave us any problems. Docks were thriving, and I'm talking about the sort of 1850s through to the 1950s. This was mostly a Chinese area. We made a great big change to the East End in that particular area that was two streets, which was called Chinatown. And we were very favorably received in a novel way. When they came off the ships, some of them stayed and they married English ladies because there wasn't any Chinese ladies available. And they gamble with their hard-earned wages off the ship on the gambling tables. The Tong were the people that financed all these illicit measures. If they wanted a little opium, I suppose, because they'd got the habit off the Raj in Hong Kong, they, they would find an illicit place. Right, the pyramid. In 1934, Sachs Roma wrote uh, a number of novels about Fu Manchu and his opium den. I'd read all these stories, and it was nearly always dark after school going to piano lessons. And I really used to look for these mysterious mists. And according to him, if you press the right panel on the pyramid, it will open up and there's a secret stairway down into Fu Manchu's opium den. Actually, when I read these books, I can't imagine anybody believing such rubbish. Yes, but they did.
when I come through here and I lock the gate behind me, I'm at peace with myself. I forget the world outside. So the vehicle's going up and down, you don't worry me really. We have Italians, we got Greeks, we got Turks, we got Bangladeshis, we got Indians. I have friends who comes up here. The only problem is you don't see them when you start working, but when you start to reap the produce, people always said, oh, well, how's the allotment? You know, how are things going? Can I come up there with you? I can grow my own tomatoes, my own potatoes, my own lettuce, cabbage, spring onions, garlic. I grow everything. And I pick them up fresh and take them to my house. Organic. It's a place for you to sit down and have a break. South of the town quay, embarking, you really were actually on marshland, you're on Thames marshland, and civilization was kind of left behind. You'd find old, sort of wrecked cars down there that people had left. It was pretty wild up there. People riding around on motorbikes and loads of little herberts sliding down the mud hills there on supermarket trays and stuff like that. It was really the, the absolute limit of where you could walk from my house. And you know the Beckton Alp, it's the old slaggy from the gas works. When I was a kid, before they built the fly over there, and that was a big black mound. When the gas works were still there, although it was no longer gas works, was where um, Stanley Kubrick filmed all the battle scenes from Full Metal Jacket. Ten years ago, I went down there, and you could climb over the fence and go in there, and the building still had Vietnamese signs on them written from when it was Kubrick Town. Whenever I see that movie, I always think you might just be able to see the Curfew Tower or maybe the Barking Town Hall in the background while it's all going on. somebody's daft idea of art. They call the witches hats or, or, or Madonna's, uh, Madonna's brows. Madonna's brows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forget how long we lived here. <laughs> 48 years. 48 years. We didn't have nothing round us at all, it's just the estate. Yeah, see the river, mm. see the bus tops as the boats go by. Mm -hmm. The animals, cows. Everybody mm. called it Hollywood. Hollywood. It used to be called, yeah, the bus drivers. When the, when the buses stopped at your stoplight, they used to shout out Hollywood because <laughs> they all had bathrooms, see no one. Luxuries like that then. Henry VIII used to stay often. That was his hunting lodge. So when he stayed there, he used to ride over the back here on his horse. I think it was to do with his, something to do when he wanted to divorce his first wife to marry Anne Boleyn and, uh, he had, and they was against it and he had all the abbeys knocked down.
I was greatly enamoured of the song Route 66. It's a very long road to Route 66, and I figured it couldn't be fabulously glorious all the way. There must be some bits of it that are a bit rough and ragged, and um, the A13 is certainly rough and ragged. I know the Clash mythologised the Westway. Uh, the Old Kent Road is another great route that's taken Londoners to find fun down by the coast, but I think the A13 is at least as great. Much of that part of the road was dominated by the old Ford works. We used to work on the V8 pilots, Prefix and Anglius. Hard work, but got our money OK. Seven was eight and an hour when I started. <laughs> but I think now it's sort of got an, an American feel about it. The A13 is one of the few roads you can drive on in England that reminds me of driving in America. You know, the road out of Manhattan and through New Jersey into Springsteen land, really, is very, very similar to the A13. It's a vast industrial landscape. The smell, the massive industrial complex next to marshland and river, where you can see wild birds flying in and out, very, very much reminds me of the A13 in South Essex. Driving through New Jersey is one of the few places where I feel at home in America. You're now going through almost an industrial wilderness to get down to the river. Historically, there used to be a village here, one of East London's favourite holiday spots for many years. It's industrial riverside, but nevertheless, it has a beauty to it. I've been out here on days where the sun hitting the river is like looking at liquid mercury. These were used in D-Day, towed across the English Channel, believe it or not, despite being made of concrete, and were used as part of the famous Mulberry Harbours. It's not the manicured river of, of Richmond and Twickenham. It is a living, working river. The byproducts of London being a successful city, you know, in its day, the hub of empire. Waste had to go somewhere. It came here. There are still plenty of wolves and jetties along here, such as the, the Erith uh, vegetable oil silos. And in fact, as the wind blows from the southeast, you're often assailed here by this kind of rotten vegetable oil smell as it drifts across the river and combines with the perfume of the landfill site to produce a very, very unique smell, which is why, you know, the, the riverside here at Raynham is an acquired taste.
See, I'm the only MP who's represented two constituencies which take in the A13. That whole area in Thurrock in my lifetime has changed enormously. One minute you've got horses, then the next minute you've got the best shopping centre in the area. Now you've got the M25, which is like the new London Wall, you know, and you pass under the gate there, out by the Lakeside Centre, you know, and then you're out into England proper. I've got a friend who's got the windmill there that you can clearly see from the A13. He had this vision of restoring a windmill. I don't entirely know why. Tilbury is an offshoot of the A13. You come down the Tilbury Docks approach road. It's quite quiet compared to what it used to be years gone by. I grew up knowing all different nationalities of people, all different religions. There was people from all over the world. There was Indian, Japanese, Chinese, Russians, uh, Americans, all the Caribbean countries, Africa. I could even remember these Chinese coming over one year and they gave all the kids around the area little German mail books and little red badges with stars on or German mail's face on. You had the chance to emigrate out to Australia when they needed professional people. All it cost you was £10 and they took you out there as long as you were prepared to stay out there for X amount of time. They called it the, the £10 exodus, I think. I know quite a few people have come back now that did that. <laughs> they managed all kinds of cargo. Rubber, fruits, meats. There were very few containers, yeah? so it was all men handled with the old grafters hook. You had a, a fair amount of... We had a lot of fruit that other people didn't get. <laughs> It was a totally international seaport. From the Thames to the world, as, the, as its motto says. Thames Estuary is just wonderful. It's an inspiration. There's great beauty, there's the beauty of the river. You've got the river there as a constant reminder of the traffic in and out of the country. Beautiful flat land of South Essex. South End. Yeah. We had people living down there as well. We used to visit. I like to go down to that go way down now. Up. So yeah. when you can, you know, it's quite nice.
as a child, it was a great treat to visit South End, which was the longest and is still the longest pier in the world. to get to Shubaness, that was our favoured uh, spot. Yeah, we used to go down there a lot, didn't we? Shrewsbury yeah. Ness. Yeah. That's what we really liked, Shrewsbury Ness. Basically because Shubaness Ness actually does face out to the to the ocean, unlike South End where you're, you're just in the mouth of the River Thames, you know. Doesn't matter what they tell you, that isn't France over there, it's just Kent, you know, you are the Shetty. Saturday evening, they'll go down to South End, see the light. Have you ever have to go to Shubriness? Take the A road, the OK road, that's the best. Go motoring on the A13. Where you go? Looking for a few that's new. Taking forts down the tunnel and the river too. Motoring on the A13. Start standing whopping, there ain't a stopping. Bypass parking and straight through Dagenham Down to Grace Farrock and rather near Basil Dunn. Did see Thundersley and Lily on Sea Chalk, well, Brittle, well, South End's the end of you. There we go, the Shubuness. Take the A road. The OK road, that's the best. Go motoring on the A13. Let's rock back, well. Parking and straight through Dagenham Down to Grey Starrock and rather near Basil Dunn. Pitch Sea, Bunsley, Adley, Little Sea, Chalk, Well, Brittle, Well, South End's the end of you. There we go, the Shubriness. Take the A road, the OK road, that's the, 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 the best. Go motoring on the A13. Go motoring. I put sing Go out to win Don't be I for in Just like the old days, isn't it, Mum? 